you gotta clap mm. so you can line up the audio uh, and post. Okay. And we're good. Tante, what's up, brother? Thanks for being here. Oh, of course, man. My pleasure, dude. My uh, pleasure. This is uh, episode f- six. I have two more I haven't released, so welcome. And I just want to start the podcast off today by saying R.I.P. Chadwick Bozeman, Black Panther, King T'Challa. Fucking sucks, dude. He was, he, uh, that's a real life superhero, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was just crazy when that news came out. Everyone kind of learned simultaneously, uh, you know, the afflictions that he was dealing with, with being diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. And it just made me reflect a lot about how life is like, very short i mean we've obviously dealt with like a lot of death like this year in general spontaneous and out of nowhere but like uh that really just taught me a lot about just who you surround yourself with because like chadwick you know he's a pretty famous person i assume has a lot of friends and like no one on his team like said anything about that he was going through that like totally like confidential for four whole years and just working consistently all the time yeah. like looking like great the entire time and like producing so much content and mm-hmm. absolutely as you said like a real life superhero like even outside of black panther just he's portrayed so many iconic characters james round thurgood marshall mm-hmm. jackie robinson like it really doesn't stop the five bloods which is like a fictional character but like yeah. I, I felt that was very important as well and i mean towards you know this current time period it was just crazy because he obviously looked slightly different you know he lost weight but like i always yeah. assumed it had something to do with who he was portraying you know? right like that's something like that character. happens very like frequently like christian bale like mm-hmm. was like 120 pounds like <laughs> in the movie the magnus so right. it's like all right yeah he's i don't know maybe he's playing a cancer patient or something right. like that but like i was that just uh really shook me yeah man and as i talk to people about it it's like you really can't wait on things you just have to do them asap like because you always think you're gonna have time you always think you're gonna have time like yeah especially at this point in our lives i mean we all think we're invincible you know right man that's that's clearly not the case i mean how how did you feel when you originally found out about that (sighs) it's crazy because you know i handle death in a weird way Mm. it's you know so I was at Bryn Sullivan's house, actually, mm. and um, we were just hanging out, having a good talk, which I wish we could have recorded. It would have been an awesome podcast, yeah. but that's neither here nor there. And um, we're all sitting there and Cassidy Devaney is like, oh, my God, like this guy died. And she was like maybe a few free in front of me. And she went like this and like just held up the Instagram post. And I was like, who is that? Ju- Jussie Smollett? Like, that's who I thought it was. <laughs> and then and is that Juicy? And then. I looked and I was like, oh, fuck, like Chadwick Boseman. And just my heart skipped a beat. Yeah. And I just, we were having this awesome conversation. The vibes were high and they wanted to keep talking. And I was like, we have to take a second because yeah. like we just lost a, a real life superhero. Yeah. Like, because the Marvel movies oh. have had such a profound impact on me and a lot of people listening to this like especially black panther because dude dead ass the first thing i did after i saw black panther in theaters was i went and i bought this action figure wow. it was the f- i was like aaron was with me he's like we're going to target what do you mean and like he was kind of annoyed and i was like we have to go to target i need to get a fucking black panther toy yeah because you know dude and the cool thing too like black panther says onwards a few times in yeah. the movie they yeah. say it in wakandan or what or whatever the mm-hmm. the language they speak but yeah, man, those movies are so powerful and just, you know, yeah, they're fun, like, action movies and superheroes, but just not only the, the, the character arcs are very just deep and inspiring, but those movies, they, they're so, they have such a profound ability to induce, like, emotion in the people watching Absolutely. them. You know, I always get worked up watching them, even, you know, in the latest, last two Avengers movie, like, I found myself tearing up not just because I was sad, but like because of how powerful the imagery yeah. and the stories yeah. are. And they're just, they're so powerful, man. And especially like Black Panther being such a powerful movie for the black communities of the world and yeah. just all the little kids that were inspired by that. And it's just, it, it, it sucked, man. And it, it just, it really, it definitely hurt. And then, you know, I had to like kind of take a few minutes and just like, I actually like, I was like, I was lounging and I, I sat up cross leg. I was like, I need to take a moment of silence for him. And I just kind of like sat yeah. there Reflect. and, uh, 
yeah, man, it's, it, it sucks, but it's, it's part of life. And something that I talked about with Malcolm, when we recorded, when we ended the last podcast, we were talking about, well, first we were talking about Mac Miller and then juice world and how I said, it's a shame that they're gone. But like the beautiful thing is that they exist through their art forever. Absolutely. And the art is what speaks for itself. Every day. So like if you and I died tomorrow, like this podcast would be out and it would, we would exist forever in that yeah. sense. So it, it hurts and it sucks, but like also he is home, if you will. He yeah. returned back home. Yeah. And yeah, man, RIP. Like he'll, he'll continue to inspire through his movies and through his art. And I know for sure, like I'm probably going to watch, go back and watch Black Panther and find more inspiration in those movies and just we keep it moving, man. That's all we can do. Yeah, really. I mean, that's always the message at the end of the day. I mean, life, life goes on always. And, these people will live through you. I, I rewatched Black Panther last night mm -hmm. and uh, it definitely hit different. I mean, I was yeah. literally texting you like, you know, yep. the casino scene, there's a Stan Lee cameo and it was yeah. like, wow, like these people simultaneously that, that have had such an impact mm -hmm. on everyone's life. Like just watching them interact, it was very, very poignant experience. Mm -hmm. And you're very right about how Marvel movies, they're, it's so easy for them. It seems effortless that they're able to tap into people's emotions. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like the very last scene where uh, Daniel Kaluuya is uh, in a conflict with the Black Panther, you know, Killmonger's taking over, like yeah. all hope is lost. And he's just like beating everyone's ass. It's like, <laughs> yeah. wow, like it's just so <laughs> inspirational and like dope to watch. Like to the point where it's like, it. it's something that like both, little kids and like grown people can relate to like mm -hmm. and i feel like if you like pitch it to me any other way i'd be like oh like that's like corny like i'm, I'm yeah. above that but like they really sell you on it a hundred percent to yeah. the point that you're super super invested and mm -hmm. i just I, I love the movie and his impact as you said like on these kids i was you know i was a pretty much a grown person when this movie came out yeah but like i couldn't imagine being like a six seven year old kid like seeing something like that mm -hmm. for the first time and like seeing yourself on screen like yeah. that has really a profound impact and someone's going to take that and use that as motivation for their art that'll go on and change like another kid that was their age when they first saw black panther's life like the cycle yeah man will continue regardless you know like mm -hmm. and people are gonna do what they're gonna do i mean besides even chadwick boseman that movie was the first movie that i was really exposed to that michael b jordan was in and I loved him in that role yeah. as well. It was also a big look for Daniel Kaluuya, like all these mm -hmm. super prominent like black actors, like yeah. on, on top of like Chadwick making that impact, he also opened the door for more movies with, you know, that can be seen as risky that mm -hmm. may cast minorities or tell people stories that like maybe at a time in the past, like people didn't think should be told, you know? And yeah. that's, it's gonna last forever, you know? Yeah, man, absolutely. I think one more thing we should honor too is like despite him being sick this whole time and making these movies and playing the superhero and like being that, you know, archetype of like strength and heroism, dude, he was visiting kids in hospitals who had cancer while he was fighting cancer and like serving as, like I said, like that role model and that strength and beacon of light in their lives, even yeah. though like he didn't, he didn't fold. And like, that Never. is the ultimate sacrifice. And I, I think it just ties back into, cause I feel like for sure, um, us as artists, every project we do, every creative endeavor helps shape us throughout. And then afterwards we're always somewhat different. So yeah. I think maybe him playing Black Panther and King T'Challa, like that, that character and the it became a part of it exactly like all like the character and the values and all of that became a part of him so when he was sick he was like i can't i can't fold in front of these kids like they know me as the black panther like that because little kids like for sure they don't know him as chadwick boseman yeah, and all these other he's, yeah. he's the black panther yeah so he had to be strong for them and like yeah. that's very admirable and i think we could all learn a lot from that like no matter what you're going through it's never it's never an excuse to like not give that love back any way that you can. And I think uh, that's one of the most important things. So yeah. Incre incredibly strong yeah. of him to do that yeah. all that time and, you know, always, always give back and make his voice known prominently with 
social commentary mm -hmm. on you know the state of the world obviously this is a very crazy time like he yeah. really never bit his tongue and always stood behind what he thought was right you know mm -hmm. and i'm very glad that he was able to like make that impact because 43 years you know like seems relatively short in the scope of life but that's a long time yeah you know and he used it as well as he possibly can so mm -hmm. like that like thing that you're like oh like should I do it or like mm, like I'm thinking about it like yeah pull, pull trig do <laughs> yeah. the thing yeah <laughs> because like you're still like the amount of time that you would have taken to do that thing if you don't do that thing yeah you're still going to be that much older in the future mm -hmm. so like you might as well shoot your shot absolutely you know? dude people want to wait they're like uh, I'll I don't I want to wait till I get this or I want to wait until I'm that day never comes like yeah. you just got to jump in so like for me in this podcast I had to jump through so many hurdles to get it up and running and we're still not, we're not even using the right microphones but like yeah. I just I didn't want to wait any longer I was trying to do it all summer and I was like you know what screw it like let's just let's just do it and then because people you you don't need to have all the answers that's what you people really that's what people yeah. get wrong because nothing is perfect. And then when, because me for sure, try to be a perfectionist. I'm sure you do too in your art. But at the same time, you got to kind of balance it and realize that like sometimes you just got to take that leap of faith yeah. and trust yourself. Exactly. And then kind of figure it out along the way. And then you yeah. surprise yourself. I really kind of like to take a Picasso method where I just, I literally yeah. just throw countless stuff at the wall. I just see what sticks, mm -hmm. see what people like. Like I just put out stuff just to like get a gauge of like how people are like feeling about it. I feel like a lot of times like people like second guess themselves and they overlook what could be there when it's like at the end of the day, what really matters is people's opinions on stuff. Like you're yeah. going to listen to this track or you're going to look at this painting or you're going to watch this film that you're doing more than anyone out there will do yeah. because you're in the process of editing it all the time. Yeah. So you are going to have a more judgmental eye than someone mm -hmm. else looking at it. Like I've, yeah. I've listened to songs that I've made like hundreds of times and I'm like, I don't like the way my voice sounds there. I don't, right. you know, I, I hiccup in the lyric delivery, but then someone else <laughs> will see it and, you know, they'll be like, wow, like I, I really enjoy this. Like yeah. even to this day, I haven't put anything on forever, but even to this day, people will say like, wow, I remember like, are mm -hmm. you still like, are you still doing that? And I'm like, oh man, I have all this other stuff. It's yeah. like those like TikToks, like you're, you're one of those heroes, are you? I'm like, not anymore. <laughs> like, I haven't heard that name in yeah, a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who is that? But like, yeah, like you have to put yourself in it a hundred percent and, and see, see what happens, you know? And I struggle with that even to a certain extent when it comes to like, not even putting out content, but yeah. like having a hundred percent faith, in your art to accomplish what you want to do like i was speaking to this person like a uh, kind of like someone i met like through the internet just being in the forums like just being in the same subcultures of clothes music yeah. whatever and he was talking to me about how he works for under armor as a shoe analyst oh cool and i was like wow that's such an interesting like so like how do you even like get into that place yeah what where, is that anyway? yeah like so it's like what he does is Under Armour gives him shoes and he sends them to people and people rank them on like oh, their okay. comfortness, like how sleek they are, how good they are for different activities. Cool. And I'm like, that's so like specific. Like, how do you even like get to a place where you're able to do that? And he was like, well, originally I wanted to work for Nike and mm -hmm. I still want to like continue to work for bigger and better shoe wear companies in the future. But like what happened is I literally just moved out West and I just got a retail job and I just sent out applications constantly and tried to network as much as possible. And I was like, wow like that's i have an immense amount of respect for that because yeah. you just went out there having no idea what would happen and you were like yeah i'll just i'll just figure it out like I, i'm you know I have every, anyone could do anything so yeah. he, you just were like yeah i'm probably capable enough to do that like i'll figure it out eventually and he did it and i was like wow like that's amazing because mm -hmm. like i feel like there's so many jobs like that whether it's like creative director or like i work for some like high-end like fashion company you're like how does that even like happen you right know? and it's like it's just a lot of networking for us but mm -hmm. it's also just sheer willpower yeah. you know like these people are you know they're couch surfing they're doing all this stuff just to get to the point where they get that break but yeah. it's like you have to like grind and like be very unsure for a while before you like know that and that's what's so like inspiring to me like I, someone like tyler like one of my biggest like artistic inspirations mm -hmm. like when he dropped bastard, you know, he's sleeping on his grandma's couch. He's gone to community college. He didn't really like anything he was doing. Right. But you know, he just was relentless and just put out music. And you know, the old saying is if you build it, they will come. Yeah. And, you know, that's what happened. Yeah. That's oh, what happened they came. Yeah. They, yeah. 
<laughs> and, you know, that's a, that's a, one of the bigger examples of yeah. like stars. And I'm just talking about this guy who just had the balls to just like, you know, go out and, and go really hard for the job that he wanted. Mm-hmm. That's in a very specific field, but it's like, it's the same base message. Like you just have to like get after it yeah. and like not wait for it to be handed to you. Cause like, mm-hmm. like you said, the day will never come, unfortunately. So. Right. You also have to, I think, so many people nowadays, because we live in a world of technology and I order something on Amazon and it shows up three hours later, like we we want everything now. Instant gratification. Instant yeah. gratification. Like we've hijacked our reward system. And that's why it's so hard to quit bad habits or you do these certain things that you're addicted to because it's all dopamine. And mm. the real dopamine is like going out there and achieving real things. Uh, whether you you work hard and get that job or you grind and you put out that album and it does really well or you spend like I did 12 plus hours on that Black Panther illustration and then like that's the real dopamine is actually putting in the time and the energy and just taking your time and then that's the real gratification that's the real satisfaction so people don't understand like people don't understand that Sometimes you need to put in 10 years of work to get that one year that'll yeah. change your life yeah. forever. It's, it's, that's so true. I mean, like one of my, another one of my favorite artists, Danny Brown, like he was, mm-hmm. he was 30 years old when he like wow. broke. I didn't like, know that. He dropped the, he dropped the mixtape XXX and literally like he's on the tape, like the first song on the tape, he's like, his ad lib is 30 and he's like, if this shit don't work, man, I failed at life. Cause he's like, I'm a grown person. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I've been hungry for years. I've been doing all this, but it's like, he just kept going and he kept yep. going. I mean, someone like Jay Z, he was also a fully grown developer in his mm-hmm. late twenties yep. when he came into prominence. Like it's really never too late to right. like do those things. Mm-hmm. So if you have those, like, you know, those inhibitions that are stopping you, I mean, I guess, Obviously, everyone has their different barriers, but I guess just try your hardest to like bump those and just do, just do it and incorporate it into your art, whatever you're making, or your grind, your hustle, your business. You know, I think the universe works in a very interesting way. Where if you, so Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, and I've talked about it before on here. You should check it out. It's a really easy read, mm. and one of the things he talks about is. One of the main things he talks about is like resistance and the more resistance you feel towards something, whether you are a journalist or a writer or you make music or you make art, the more resistance you feel towards a certain project, the more important it is for you to do that. Mm. So, and what he says is this whole idea of the muse and like the spirit of the muse and how you just, as a professional, you just show up, you sit down and you just do your work and like, you respect this muse and like when you show up as a professional beautiful things start to happen in your work when you show up and you're like i'm here i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna sit and i'm gonna focus and like whatever happens happens but i'm here as a professional i don't have any fears or doubts like and that's when the real beautiful art that lasts shows up so like danny brown he was you know a a grown-ass man he's 30 years old and he's like this is what I want and I'm here to do it. And he like didn't let fear, doubt or negativity from others get in his way. Now look at him. He's like shaped the culture in such a big way. So if you're listening to this one, check out that book and two, just understand that like the difference between a professional and like a novice is like, no matter what, however, if you're feeling crappy, you didn't sleep much, just show up and do the work and show the universe that like you're serious about whatever you want to do and beautiful things will start to happen. I call that, going monk mode you know, yeah yeah i love that you're just super like tapped in to yep. like whatever and it's just like complete tunnel vision for like that aspect and you're like yeah i gotta i gotta make this thing happen i don't really know how but i just gotta <laughs> continue like the endless effort it's a it's 100 percent a war of attrition because yeah. like i'm you know some people do that their whole lives like trying to accomplish it like you're really chasing the dragon but it's like at the end of the day like you got to at least make the attempt and see if it's possible in the first place yeah. before you like completely like abandon the effort. And like I was saying to you before we even started recording, it's like sometimes you have times where you're totally off and you like don't want to be like making anything. And then you just get struck by inspiration right. out of nowhere. And then you're like, wow, like I need to create like now, like mm-hmm. that, you know, like I said, that happened to me like last night. I haven't really yep. made anything in a while, but sometimes you hear something 
and it just strikes something in you and you're like, man, like I need to, I need to write like mm-hmm. right now. Like, yep. and that's my entire like style. And then I'll just bang something out, whether it's an article, um, for grandma Sophia's cookies, check, check them out. Nice. Next, check them out. The link, next, link, the link, below. link below, <laughs> link below, check link below. <laughs> or like, it's like a song or, you know, a video yeah. or anything. You know? Yeah. I felt the same way when I, when I heard news of, of Chadwick passing, cause, uh, I, I bought an iPad pro with the Apple pencil back in like January. And the idea was like, I'm going to use this as a tool to make designs and make art and stuff. And I had used it here and there and I haven't really used it up until I would say mid last week where I started a a project for a friend for her birthday. And what I made was, it's like this badass line. I'll show you later. And I started realizing like, oh wow, like this iPad is like next level, like what Mm. I can do with this. And then Friday night before I went to Brins, before I heard about Chadwick, I was just working on like some Iron Man type illustration. And then I heard the news and I was like, damn, like I need to go home and like make art based yeah. off of him and pay yeah. homage to him in that way. Cause I felt similar. I was like kind of in this rut. I was trying to create and be creative. And then all of a sudden something happens and that inspiration, those thoughts start coming in. And then I came, I, I, sh- I showed up if you will. And I let, I showed up as a professional, even though it was like yeah. one in the morning, yeah. uh, I showed up and just did my work and, the, the art speaks for itself. I'm like super proud of it. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people um, saw it and were inspired by it. And that's because like, I like you strike when the iron's hot, if you will. Cause sometimes those creative flares, if you don't act on them, they, yeah, they're they gone. go away. They're and then gone. it's like, I've literally had that within like five seconds where I'm literally busy. And like, if I think of like a bar and mm-hmm. like, I don't write it, like it's, I'm, it's going to be lost like forever yep. because you know, synapses in your brain are yeah. going off. It's light. constantly it's literally like so it's like you have an idea and then you need to capture it immediately yeah. because like your brain's moving like a mile a minute like mm-hmm. you're always having new stimuli come in so what's going to happen is you're just going to lose that because like i said you're surrounded by constant events and we're always moving forward mm-hmm. always moving onwards yes <laughs> so like well. you got to make sure that you capture everything that you want to capture yeah. before you continue moving because you mm-hmm. know, you're gonna you don't want to lose that valuable information. Like yeah, I, I got struck, and as you did, I just played what I needed to play. Like heard you know the beat that kind of like inspired me a lot, and I just wrote an entire thing. And that's honestly rare for me. Like yeah, I, like usually I'll just be like, oh, like I just have an idea, and like it's just a funny bar that I think is like cool, and I'll just set it aside mm-hmm. to like make some, but like rarely does it actually get put into another idea because when right. i have an idea it's like that idea is stands alone and i'm thinking of things that are specifically tailored to it i'm not gonna like try and like mash two random ideas together if they're right. not like actually synonymous but like last night it was just like word like i know everything that i want to like make and i rarely write in a bar hook mm-hmm. bar hook but like the entire concept like it was just like going through me like and i just i just knew what to say like it didn't even feel like me it was just second nature you know yeah man what is that like what is it when because i I think when you're in those deep creative states it's almost like something else takes over and like you as the individual get put in the passenger seat and then like something else just takes over because there's been times where i've design something or created something on the computer and like if you were to ask me to do it again i'd be like i yeah i, I can't i mean like, we're like satellites man like yeah all these mm-hmm. <laughs> all these messages are coming in as i said all these stimuli are coming in mm-hmm. and we're just projecting what we see and what we experience outwards like our feelings like our innermost mm-hmm. whatever's compelling us to do it like it's occurring whether it's you know the universe or something more divine or just shit that we see out in the streets but yeah it pushes and pulls us around in the ideas that we create, like I b- fully believe that we're products of you know our environment. Like definitely, things come in, things go out. Like it's you know for every reaction, there's there for every action, there's a equal and opposite reaction. So mm-hmm. it totally makes sense that you wouldn't be able to do it again because you're not in the same mind state that you were when you created that piece. Definitely, of art, you know. And I feel like a lot of artists get into like ruts where they're trying to recreate mm-hmm. things that they did previously instead of growing. You know, right. like you have to move forward Mm -hmm. and that's the thing like you know like 
I listen to all types of music, mm-hmm. but like I'd say like my first experience of like falling in love with music completely was like rap music, and I see it a lot with like artists who like in the game they make something and it has a huge impact, yeah, and then they attempt to recreate that track, mm-hmm. whether it's themselves or it's like a label that's yeah. like this is what you're good at you are going to recreate it because yes. this is what sold before and this is what yeah. will sell now and that literally never works that's it's literally death yeah because you can't just re- recreate the process because you're not the same person that mm-hmm. you were and the stimuli is different everything is different so you need to move on completely that's why someone like Mac, like the music that is at the end of his career was entirely unrecognizable yeah. from kids or someone like Tyler, the music that he's making now is completely unrecognizable yep. from bastard and goblin. He so, recreates himself every album. Yeah, and that's, every, yeah. it was a perfect segue. Cause that's who I wanted. That's exactly who I was thinking of. And every single album he puts out, it's like, it's a different person. Yeah. Igor, he, he's got a wig on and yeah. some, like, it's not even him. Different, you know yeah, what I mean? Different dude. So like, and, but that's what's so cool because kids like us will see that or other people and they, everything we just said is completely reinforced where like he put out Bastard and then what, what came after that? Goblin. Goblin yeah. And like those tapes were very dark and like that's when he was going through all that. And then as he grows, like he, he realized, I'm sure he realized, I can't speak for him. I'm not Tyler yeah. the Creator, but he was like, all right, cool. It worked. But like, what's next? Yeah, what's exactly. next? And Again, the art speaks for itself. Flower Boy and Igor, spe- especially Flower Boy, are some of like that's one of the most important albums. Yeah, I in, agree. In my life, you know, just just the symbolism and 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 all the stuff that you know entails that album, and it's just yeah, it's because he didn't lock himself in that box, or even or even like actors like Chadwick Boseman, like okay, every time, like and again, no offense to like The Rock, yeah, okay, yeah, every movie, it's like. Dwayne Johnson is Dwayne Johnson. Like yeah. in, in every, yeah, every it's every the movie, same yeah. thing. So if I see a Dwayne Johnson movie and again, like he's a fucking savage, like yeah. I aspire to be on his level of savagery someday, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, he's kind of put himself in this box where he's only pl- like, you'll never see yeah, him. He's in himself. Like, in, exactly. Same like Kevin Hart or like, yeah, you know, yeah. like it's like, you, you know, what you're getting yeah. when you see their face on, on a billboard. And yeah. like that goes for, you know, music as well. Right. Like a lot of people getting ruts and like that works for them, but that's couldn't be me as they say. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, yeah, it just, it, I would get so bored. I feel like, but yeah. obviously if you're making a hundred million dollars yeah. for a movie, you know, you know people, like, oh. they're cool with that. But I look at other act, like other actors, like, okay, like you mentioned Christian Bale or like Joaquin Phoenix where they go yeah. through these crazy transformations to fit into a certain mold but it doesn't mean that that's well, like Joaquin Phoenix had to lose like 50 pounds for Joker and yeah, he insane. just he just smoked cigarettes constantly and like didn't eat <laughs> and he did that to almost it was almost like a form of rebirth for him to fit that certain narrative just like Tyler creating Igor it's like and that there's something that's very refreshing about that 100%. Or you'll see Christian Bale as Batman and he's like husky. And then you'll see him in that, what's the movie where he's like a, a crack fiend or a heroin addict? What's that movie? Oh, uh, The Machinist. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. There's something very refreshing about that because yeah. you, you're like, wow. Because especially as someone, who, people who are creatives like you and I, it's it's just refreshing where you're like, wow. Okay, they made the art. They spoke for themselves, but then they re- like, it. let's keep moving forward. Like, what's next? What can we do next? How can we push the boundaries and like even not only surprise ourselves, but like other people and show them like our abilities as an artist. Yeah. And that's really important. You know who like, remind, like reminds you of that when you're talking about like, oh, like it's kind of like it's very similar, like over and over again, mm-hmm. like, which is like it's it's mocked like constantly you know, on Twitter, yeah. Instagram. It's funny, but like the baby, you know, it's like, yeah. And like I said, it is 100% possible to like get great success that way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, no as you're saying, The Rock, Kevin Hart, and like he has a good formula. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Right. But it's like it's very artistically stagnant. Yeah. But like those are two different things. Like there's commercially successful. Yeah. And then there's like critically acclaimed. Yeah. And like those don't require the same. Uh, they they don't require the same materials mm-hmm. to like be any like they could be entirely separate. You know, yeah. like Avatar is like the highest grossing movie of all time. But like Avengers Endgame beat oh, it. Oh yeah, that is true. Avengers Endgame did beat it. But like if you <laughs> like <laughs> but like if you ask me like, oh like what's like the best directed film or like what film has right, the most aesthetically right. pleasing shot, like I'd Avatar. probably 
think of like other shots before like I would think of that, you know, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, it is it is a business, you know. Right. So it totally makes sense. And they are still able to like actualize extremely good creative ideas like, you know, Marvel movies specifically. Like I forget. Well, I forgot how um, comedic they are in certain aspects yeah. and how good they are at like dissolving tension with like well-placed like humor. laughs with, mm-hmm. yeah, with well-placed humor and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I don't know if you remember like um, Black Panther, like uh, again, I'm, I keep referring to the casino scene, but it's probably my favorite like yeah. part of the entire movie because it's like they have that giant one shot take, which I'm, I'm a sucker for one shot takes, but uh, Ulysses Claw, or, yeah. you know, whatever he uh, is talking to the CIA agent and <laughs> he's like, Oh yeah, like did you like think of that yourself? And he's like, Yeah, like I make music. Like you want to hear my mixtape? Yeah. And the guy's like, Don't make me listen to your music. <laughs> like, and like the, that character Claw is like a clown throughout the mm-hmm. entire movie, like through the most like serious you know situations. Yeah. Like he like is like, Oh, like you look so much like your father. And then like he blows you know T'Challa away, and he's like, mm-hmm. I just made a joke. Yeah, like, yeah. And he's, like, I made it rain. Dying about it, like, uh huh. Oh my god, yeah. Like so, they're really good at doing that, despite how you know they are very serious about the commercial aspect of their art as well. Right. But it works, you know, whatever mm-hmm. works. Yeah, man, dude. Uh, would you ever make a film or a movie? Oh, 100%. I mean, that's like another thing where it's like, I really need to like get into monk mode. Yeah. And like I've wrote, I've written like snippets of screenplays yeah. before because I feel like that's like the base of everything yes you know in a film like obviously like i can actualize in my head i know what it is visually but if you ask me to like write out every conversation i couldn't so that's what mm-hmm. i need to like get out of my brain first because like uh i went to like a a pretty big school a state school and yes. like the experiences that i had there were like uh ridiculous <laughs> yeah, to say like the least and um some of my favorite films are like Days and Confused, um, the movie Kids from 1995, mid-90s. Yes. Um, Project X, you know, it's like a Coming of pleasure. age films. Coming of age films about, like, people, you know, they're just regular people, but they're having, it's not like a giant, you know, action movie. They're just kids having conversations, being kids, learning about themselves, learning about others, yeah. indulging, um, you know, the show Euphoria as well. Because, yeah. like, I find it interesting how people are coming of age, but, like, there's a lot of emphasis, especially in college, like, you do go there to learn, but like a lot of people are there to like lose their minds. Yes. And like, I enjoyed that and I felt mm-hmm. like I kept a good balance, but like yeah. the whole time I was there, I was just like, word, like I'm trying to get active, yeah. you know? And I just had like a fantastic time and I want to like put into words so I can, you know, document that experience I had, like as a student coming to age, having all these like extremely euphoric amazing experiences while learning about myself and growing as a person because yes. like i just saw crazy stuff to the aspect it kind of felt like goodfellas where mm. things were really good and then something bad would happen mm-hmm. and then it was like oh like wow like i I've, I've grown from that experience and now i'm uh learning from it also another one of those films animal house another classic classic because classic. you know i was uh i was in greek life as well so like mm-hmm. i just felt like all these things like mix and match with all my interests and I want to create that because I feel like a lot of people can relate to that for like, sure and I feel like the people who are in that field right now like they capture it but they're not as like artistic about it like I haven't really seen right. like a more artisanal movie that documents like life at like a state school like I'm talking like a mix between like dazed and confused like euphoria that has that like ridiculous like kind of dumb animal house energy yeah but like comes comes at it with more finesse so like yeah. absolutely like i want to document that and hopefully i can write that to completion soon um because as i said like i i already know and it's funny because when i think about it i'm like hmm like would i just document like the entire four years in one film or like would mm. i have to like because you know like obviously it's a very long time and i had like a lot of like right. different experiences when it came to like joining an organization or like my time like there living in a house like full of psychopaths or you know so i'm like man like what should i really like zero in on right like is complex enough and like i think i'm like kind of getting to that because i know where you know things were more low-key like i that's another thing when you're making a film you gotta know where to trim the fat right because people's attention spans are only so long yeah 
especially when you're producing something for the first time. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it would probably be like a more streamlined experience that doesn't cover the entire time. Yeah. Not towards the end and not towards the beginning, more towards the middle Mm -hmm. where you're, you know, that, that sophomore year, junior year where you're really feeling yourself. Yeah. And like the obligations that come with real life have not kicked in yet. Yes. And the obligations that came from your previous life where you were like, Oh, I'm just a kid. I'm fresh out of high school. Yeah. So that middle passage is really what I want to capture and put on film because like uh as as they say my life a movie <laughs> i love <laughs> i love that man have you ever uh seen the movie boyhood uh i haven't but i'm very familiar with it um i have it's a was shot over 12 years they yeah. just capture that that man's entire adolescence yeah and, really cool idea yeah where you you have the same actors for 12 years meet up I guess maybe a couple times a year and film a, cu- a few scenes. And it was just, it's a very cool concept. Um, the, the thing that I think is funny is like, how do you pitch that to somebody oh, in terms yeah. of like a, a studio to like g- give you a budget for that? It's like, yeah, yeah it's going to take 12 years. Hopefully the return on investment is good, yeah, but like, oh. that was, a, I think it, it, it won a few Oscars. No, I yeah, think. it did. It did very good. Yeah. And it's, that's one of the most unique movie concepts I've yeah. ever heard. I've never heard of a film that like really commits like that hard. And that's like kind of the thing where it's like, he just was like, man, this is my idea. I gotta, I gotta actualize it in some way. I'm not gonna abandon it. And you know, I bet that a large amount of studios were like, uh, no, we don't (laughs) want to touch this at all. This sounds not like a good investment. Uh, you know, I definitely prefer to have my money Mm -hmm. in two, three years opposed to like over a decade, you know, might not even work here anymore after that. But you know, he actualized his vision with the help of a, a risk-taking studio. Mm-hmm. And that's always great to see because yeah. risks need to be taken, you know, to accomplish the art in the first place. And it's funny because it's a endless cycle. Like things are seen as too abstract, too strange. And then that first person will come out that actually like does it yeah. well and it makes return on investment. And then people yes. are like, wow, I guess we can do these things you know like mm-hmm. i see that a lot with like a24 movies like, yeah those movies are amazing always run you for a huge mind yeah. fuck and these are movies that like probably if you pitched them like 10 years ago they'd be like this is so abstract this is so weird no one yeah is gonna watch this like why like why would i watch a movie about two random dudes on a lighthouse like going yes. crazy oh for like gosh. you know two hours but it's like they just take these interesting very obscure concepts and they make them like impossible to look away from yeah and they have diehard followings myself included yep me too like a24 is the first movie studio and i'm like man i want their merch like not even like a movie that they where it's like marvel it's like i love these characters it's just like i just like a24 as a concept Mm -hmm. and like when i was speaking coming of age movies i kind of like left them out but like they are very like you know uh lady bird and uh hot summer now all these movies that they came out with yeah that are very much also in that like coming of age. Sure, I, it's funny. I said I didn't talk about A twenty four movies, but I did bring up mid nineties, which is yes, and uh, cla- another A twenty four classic, yeah. Jonah Hill classic. Yeah, you know, super bad as well. If you're gonna talk Jonah Hill, you yep. gotta talk about yep that amazing performance. What's cool about Super Bad? Not to cut you off, but I think it's really awesome that Seth Rogen and oh, what is his name? Uh, Bill Hader. Not Bill Hader, Seth Rogen's writing partner, Evan Goldberg. Oh yeah, they wrote Superbad while they were in high school. Yeah, and then they were able to to uh, because to make that, it, to that make was it that was them. Yeah, that was literally them. Like yep. they just like you have to write and you have to do what you know. Yeah, you know, and they completely encap like that movie is one of the most genuine to uh, classical high school experience that I've ever seen. Yep. Like it's a great they, coming of age movie. They, and it, it hasn't even aged. Like they still today, like kids talk like that. Yep. Like like that like that's what <laughs> like a, a high school classroom yep. is like that's like the type of like, you know, debauchery that will go on at like a standard like high school party where yeah. people are like very stupid. Like debauchery. They they know what's going on, you yeah. know. And they were able to capture that because that was them. You mm-hmm. know? And that's what I would like to do for like higher education where it's like, I obviously have experienced it. I know how people speak, you know, I, so I feel like that's really what you have to do. You have to put it out and you have to do it to the extent that people relate to it. Like yeah. they need to see themselves in you. Yeah. And like, that's when, a big part of it. When people watch super bad, I, people see themselves in that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And even to take it back, back to black Panther, like 
so many people, including myself, saw you see parts of yourselves in these characters, and that's why they're so they have such a big impact and such a big just pull and I guess yeah, I guess impact would be the word. Um and that's that's what's really cool. Even about music, I forget who said this, but they were like, you know, popular music for 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 music or a song or a, I guess a movie, but I think specifically music to to really make an impact, it has to be very universal where like everybody can relate, but also very personal where the mm. personal listener can also relate to it in like almost like a individual yeah, way. It's, it's crazy cuz you got to find that that sweet spot. Yeah. And you know who I think does that extremely well like to the point where it's like ridiculous Drake <laughs> yes yeah like <laughs> yeah. it's insane like he's yeah. so good at like tapping into things that everyone can relate to yeah but like at the same time he hears music he's like damn he's just like me it's you like just bro, hear Marvin's he's, room. he's not like you <laughs> no, at all no. like his life right. experience is not like 99% right. of the earth right. but it just really feels like that yeah. and he is so good at identifying those specific aspects like even with like laugh now cry later you yeah. know and like him calling the album certified lover boy like yeah. he knows that like they're gonna be hundreds you know thousands of people who like are gonna have that instagram t caption yep. like i'm a certified lover yep. boy. it's yep. like no you're not <laughs> no, no you're not bro <laughs> but it's I'm like outside it's fun, but amg yeah, dude, it's bro like, you drive oh, a kia yeah but it's <laughs> like i drive i drive an infinity so yeah. I, I just switch up i'm outside in infinity there you go there <laughs> like, we go that works but that it's fits. like oh man like it just it just totally like makes sense in that uh aspect and he just knows how to like make those things whether or not he's like the only creative mind behind it that right. people can identify with and still relate to even when he's like 15 years in the game because we all have those feelings you know we all yes you know catch feelings for people when like things don't work out yeah like we all want to flex we all want to grind do this do that travel with the boys you know mm -hmm. like like a Imagine if I never met the Broskis. Like it's like, yeah. all right, yeah, that, that it got very played out, and it you know got corny over time because it got played like every single day. Yeah. But it's like people, you know, I have those feelings. Like it's like, man, like yeah, the, man. you meet people and they change your life. So yes. it's like, imagine if you didn't have the impact of these people in your life, and it's like, man, like that's like that's real, mm -hmm. you know. And obviously, like people identify with that. It wouldn't be so successful if they didn't. And you know, again, like laugh now cry later um <laughs> obviously they they do that very well on that yeah. as well you know like and because we've all felt like that like the song is very triumphant you yes. know like his music it sounds like winning you know? yeah, it <laughs> like, definitely does so it's like yeah i feel like subconsciously he really like tracked that down to so it's like yeah if you don't like me then like you don't like winning right so it's like yeah. everyone's like they feel very compelled to side with that and if just you know it works mm -hmm. i also feel like he has such a long catalog that yeah, he now does. he can literally reference himself and people don't even know. Like, yeah. Laugh Now, Cry Later, like, it sounds like a remix of Trophies. Mm, yeah, like, as soon as you said Triumphant, that's the song I thought like of. Like, the, the melody, like, and, you know, the saxophone. Yep. It literally, it sounds, like, slightly more sped up. Like, I don't think it's the exact same sample, but, like, right. it sounds very similar. Yeah. And, like, you can tell he's hearkening back because, like, at this point, you know, Trophies is, like, four five years ago yeah so like in rap like that's a long time yeah, it is. like people come and go in one year mm -hmm. so five years that's a long and he's been out here for that amount of time doing uh doing what he does yeah and you know he also is great at identifying people who can link up to or also on their upward journey like it's like yes. the drake stimulus package <laughs> like you know he obviously put little Dirk on this song but it's like look alive tuesday yep. like all these songs where it's like he is kind of giving these artists their first hit and it's almost dangerous to an extent yeah. because like they you know block boy jb obviously like i don't like not like i assume that he's eating off his music and he's doing yeah. well providing haven't for heard himself, anything from providing him. for his family yeah but like at the same time it's like he you know i go on to spotify the most streamed song is going to be look alive yes absolutely like so it's like man like and there's this artist that i'm also a big fan of uh this female rapper who's great kari fo and um, she had the song No Small Talk, you mm -hmm. know, banger. This was a long time ago. It was 2013. This is yeah. like 30 years in rap time. <laughs> right. But like, you know, OVO called her and was like, hey, like Drake, you know, wants to remix this song. It's gas. And the wow. song is amazing. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to pass. And it's like, wow. Because she wanted to have control over her artistic imagery. And like, as I said, like, she's still doing well for herself, mm -hmm. you know, collabing with like great artists like Steve Lacey's Kendrick, et cetera. Yeah. But 
she didn't want to be known as like oh like the drake feature yeah and I, she didn't want that to hijack her career but at the same time it's like maybe that could have been a call but you know we'll, we'll literally never know right and i feel like for someone like lil dirk that's a safer call because he's been producing music and being entirely successful and you know taking care of himself on his own mm -hmm. for like years like when i saw lil dirk on that feature i wasn't like Oh, who's Lil Durk? Right, but like we when I know. saw when I saw like Black Boy JB, I was like, oh, who's that? Yeah, or like when I saw him make a song with I Love McCone, and like I didn't know who I Love McCone was at the time. Right. So it's way safer when you're actually collabing with an artist. And when I'm speaking of relatable lyrics, like he didn't even say words, but like when he's like, nah, like that, <laughs> like I feel like that every day. Like I can't even put that into words, but like I feel like that. he captured it. He really captured like Genius. the vibe of just like. I don't know, just oh, a primal scream into the void, dude. Like yeah. it's what everyone needs to do. Like every sometimes you know, few weeks, you just need to scream into the void. Yeah. And like that was a good ass void scream yeah. if I if I've ever heard one. Yeah. But yeah, it's like it's perfectly relatable. Some artists are more like they're like, all right, like I'm not gonna have as wide of a range, mm -hmm. but I'll be better at relating to a specific type of person. Yeah. So that's where you get like the Tylers and the Childish Gambinos, where it's like, where like, I'm just going to focus on this subsection of mm -hmm. the community and like they're going to get it more. And it's funny because I brought up Kari Fo earlier. Yeah. The song that Drake wanted to get on, uh, Childish Gambino ended up getting on the remix. And that's a way more manageable, like, and when she's doing that, she's tapping into the certain audience that she already had. Yeah. The people who are more into a specific type of music so like that's not going to overshadow her as much and it made more sense as a collab for her and everyone should stream that song no small talk do by it by carrie foe it's absolute banger uh big big throwback big like 2012 like rap mm -hmm. blog vibes yeah but you know it's amazing how music can really take you back to certain points and times in your life and 100%. that's why i love mac 100%. miller so much because every album he ever put out serves as a staple for the period of time in my life and i mm -hmm. talked about this before when kids came out i was 13 14 years old eighth grade like about to be in high school and like everything that he was talking about in those albums was exactly that's what was exciting in my life at the time yeah. girls and parties yeah. and like smoking weed and like that it's that coming of age album yeah. kids kids exactly, <laughs> exactly yeah, man kids. exactly so and then after that it was um blue slide park and then you know uh watching movies and just every album served as like not only you just grow, like you grew up with them. exactly man yeah. and, but just even the things yeah, that's why these these musicians and these 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 artists have such an um, incredible way to make music that everybody could vibe to as a collective but also yeah. that you can connect with as an individual and that's why i love so much about artists like mac or tyler or Dre or like whoever man you know it's 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 such a powerful thing and again, like even though that they may be gone, like they do exist forever. Hundred percent. And we'll make sure they live on. And dude, like as I said, like feeling like I grew up with Mac, like it's like I literally could time it like to a T. I feel like as like I grew and got more jaded with the world and saw more yes. things, like I began to listen to Faces yeah. by him a lot, which is one of my favorite tapes. Mm -hmm. Where you know, I mean, he's was going through crazy stuff that I could have ever gone through. Right. But it just felt like so relatable just like him talking about his personal struggles and mm -hmm. being so open about it like yes. i was just like wow like this is like so it was just so meaningful to me at the time yeah like different songs like polo jeans like yep. like he just perfectly encapsulated the feeling of just being in your room just like what am i doing man yeah. you know like just like fuck everything mm -hmm. like i i don't like this i don't like that i don't want to do that like and it's like he just was able to tap into that perfectly like yeah a song like happy birthday like you yeah. should be happy you're surrounded by a bunch of people mm -hmm. with good intentions that you know feel good for you but you you just don't feel like that right, right now you don't feel supported in that and he just perfectly tapped into that and he just shot that feeling right out of the air yeah. and just put it into the track mm -hmm. and not many people can do that but he right. just he totally knew how to do it uh diablo you know like and yeah. even outside of like the lyrics that he would write like his instrumentals they felt on faces specifically they felt so like somber yeah and so like meaningful like they mm -hmm. just like were it was an extremely powerful experience like yeah every time i would listen to it like i'd find myself like going through the whole tape mm -hmm. opposed to like just songs that yeah. like i really vibed with yeah like and even the turn up songs on it were like more 
potent, like a song yep. like Insomniac. Mm-hmm. Like, there were a lot of times, like in high school, where I either like didn't want to, or I just like couldn't sleep. Like I was, yeah. I was just crazy, and I would find myself like coming back to that song a lot, just because it's like a fuck everyone anthem. Yeah, you know? it is. Like, <laughs> or even how I think it's funeral is the last song. Whatever the last song was, you know, there's an interview where he was saying how, like, he thought he was going to die when he left the studio. Mm. I don't know if he meant, like, from an overdose or whatever, just because he, like, he was, like, locked in there for yeah. months or however yeah. long it took to put the tape together. And when it was, like, the week of outros where they're making everything, he, like, was so immersed in the art itself, he didn't know what was going to happen when it was done with. Yeah. And like it, all all of those emotions translate Perfectly. into those songs. But then it's beautiful too, where like, so I'm, I'm sure when you listen to it and when I listen to it and everybody else at that point in their life, in their journey, you could connect with it, even though we weren't struggling with, at least me and you weren't struggling with you know substance abuse and stuff like that like we could we could still connect with that music in our own personal way and then swimming comes out and it's like the clouds are starting to move and the sun's Mm, coming out and like at that point in my life a lot of big important things were happening and things really started to 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 be on the up and up and like i connected with that even more i was like holy shit like this is perfect to what's happening in my life and i think that you know music and i even find this you know uh, true to be true about like psychedelics, but music and albums, even powerful, influential movies, like they find you when you're ready for them. Yeah. So like for me, dude, I didn't hear Tame Impala until 2019. Mm. I, I had no, I had never heard of them, but like went the first song I heard was Mind Mischief, and then I listened to Currents, and like I needed that album yeah, when I heard it. Point. It yeah. could, it could not have been more relevant to what was happening in my life yeah. and uh yeah man it's just it music's really powerful in that regard 100 percent. and even him moving to that moment with swimming as you were saying like i feel like he documented aspects of that road up like on good i am and like the divine feminine like i i yes. love Yes. Those albums, especially like good i am yeah like specific songs on that like it's like you know he's really feeling himself Mm -hmm. and it's like that's dope like i love everything about that Mm -hmm. like that upwards motion where it's like yeah like everyone has demons and stuff that they face yeah but you know good morning we lit yeah we live (laughs) yeah (laughs) yep yep and then even like the divine feminine you know that's a that's a love album yeah and then the heartbreak he went through after that and then how swimming was like again been through some shit got a little better and like we're finally we're we're coming back we're yeah. coming back and then unfortunately yeah of course but s- self care yeah like mm-hmm. just I mean like it was the lead single but like that is definitely still my my favorite song on the yeah. project and I remember watching that video and like it's crazy you know he's emerging from the dirt which is like reinventing himself yes. as we've been talking about this entire time with different artists and the symbolism was just so strong especially with that instrumental change, which I love beat changes in general and songs, but it just felt like him transitioning into a new experience where it's like, he's literally breaking out of a casket and he's literally being reborn. Yeah. And that second beat is just so like warm Mm -hmm. and like, it just feels great. Like it gives me like chills just like describing it, but it's like, wow. Like he really uh, perfectly documented him growing up you know into yes. a different person better for his experiences and learning from them you know yeah it's crazy all right dante we've been talking for almost an hour you want to wrap this bad boy up yeah yeah i think so cool man i think if anybody first if you're listening thank you for being here again of course but if you're out there and you're an artist or you're creative and you like to be creative it's important to just reinvent yourself and try new things and and just dive into the unknown and jump, scream into that void, if yeah, you will. the primal scream. Yeah, and just just unapologetically show up as a professional and let that spirit of the muse take over, and who knows what you're going to create, you know? If you're listening to this and you're thinking about starting that project or whatever, painting that painting, stop waiting. Just do it Yeah. and see what happens. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> just do it. Oh, that'd be an awesome sound effect. <laughs> I'm going to have to add that. We'll get that going. All right, Dante. 
Thanks All for right. being here, brother. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.